What are the most common mistakes while preparing for CCNA? What should I do in order to avoid those pitfalls? How I can study efficiently in order to pass the exam as soon as possible? In this episode, we'll find the answer for all of these questions and much more. Hello everyone and welcome to NetCafe where we discuss everything networking and IT certifications related. In this episode, I thought it's a good idea to talk about the 5 mistakes I made while preparing for Cisco's CCNA exam. The CCNA is such a critical milestone for many engineers and I wanted to help you avoid all the mistakes I made while preparing for the exam. So, let's go! In this channel we talk about the networking, DevOps, certifications, so if you like this type of topics, consider subscribing. This is actually my second video about the CCNA exam, so if you are interested in some study techniques or strategies, you can check out the first video that I made here. Mistake number one, not creating a study schedule. So it was a huge mistake from my side that I didn't have any specific study routine or study schedule it, that would help me to structure my knowledge. Instead, I would study whenever I had time, which impacted my study in the very negative way. Because instead of spending only half a year to preparing for the exam, I think it took me about a year in order to approach it. The first thing that is so important in order to master, review and learn the new material for the exam is to create a study schedule or study routine. So you can allocate the time on Monday to, for example, only read theory, then on Wednesday to only do hands-on. On Friday you do the exercises that involve both theory and the practical experience. And then you can spend weekend just reviewing the material. Considering how much material there is, you need to have a allocated time to just review the material that you already learned. Mistake number two, not seeing the full picture. One of the biggest challenges uh, when study for CCNA is grasping how different topics are all connected and related. While it is easy to study about VLANs, for example, in isolation, if you don't see how this element, for example, interacts with routing, you are not seeing the full picture. Another great example is wireless and security. So why Wireless networks are inherently more vulnerable to the security attacks and threats rather than the wired networks. Understanding wireless technologies is essential, but together with the, so for example, security topics, you can make sure that the connection that you are establishing between two different endpoints is truly reliable and secure. That really involves things like, for example, appropriate encryption, uh, firewalls, ACLs, and other security appliances. So if you just focus on wireless and you don't see, for example, security picture, a security element into that, it might be difficult for you at the exam to really uh, answer all the questions because you might lack of this depth needed to pass the exam. In order to avoid the pitfalls, first thing that you can do is try to integrate your studies, your topics as much as possible. So once you, for example, start a new topic, try to see the connection, like how it connects with the rest of the topics. By understanding how the uh, topics are interconnected, not only will you be better prepared for the exam, but also for the real world examples and scenarios that you will have to solve already as a network Linux or a cloud administrator. Mistake number three, underestimating the importance of the hands-on practice. And let's be honest, very often hands-on practice is not the most favorite part of the people that are studying for CCNA, which is such a shame. This is really where all the best fun is. And I have to admit, while I was preparing for CCNA, I didn't lap enough. Of course, I still managed to pass the exam, but when it comes to the labbing, now from the time perspective, I really regret that I didn't spend more time in Cisco Packet Tracer or a GNS3. Another instance where hands-on practice really provided very important was when I was studying the OSPF. In theory, I have understood quite well how the protocol worked, but only when I started to lab it in Packet Tracer, I have started to understand what is the really meaning of the different parameters when I try to change it and adjust it. So hands-on hands -on practice really helps you to reinforce your memory by typing the comments, by seeing how the different elements of the network behave. As I also have said in one of my other videos about the CCNA exam itself, we have to remember that there is a quite high probability that you will get the hands-on questions. So don't underestimate really the importance of the hands-on practice because it's a, such a huge element of a Cisco CCNA. 
Mistake number four, poor time management during the exam. CCNA is a challenging exam, let's face it, but apart from the material that you have to master, it's also the time management that you need to take under the consideration. It was one of my biggest mistakes at the exam because I had spent too much time trying to answer some specific question rather than keeping in mind that there are just so many questions ahead that I should also be able to answer. When I started the exam, I really felt confident. So I spent two or three minutes per question or then I was really, you know, double checking with there is really the correct answer however the reality was that the time was flying quite quickly and you know you have about 100 questions so that gives you a little bit more than one minute per question so you have to be really mindful in order to correctly balance your time per question of course there will be some questions that will require more time in order to reflect or configure something like the labs that I have already mentioned but there will be also some easier questions where you just see different protocols on some configuration and you just know right away what is the correct answer in order to avoid falling into that pitfall i really recommend taking some timed preparation exams these exams will simulate the environment with the different questions that are very much similar to something that you will have during the exam together with the time pressures a good example of the timed uh, questions are the ones from boson like putting the link into the description mistake number five not joining a study group or seeking help while i was preparing for Cisco CCNA, I th was really doing this by myself. After the exam, I have discovered that there were just so many forums, online fo forums on Facebook or LinkedIn, where people are exchanging their experience when it comes for the CCNA, CCNP or any other Cisco exam. Joining as an online study group or forum can really help with motivation, answering questions, so don't hesitate to reach up for help. Don't, don't hesitate to ask people online. In addition, if you have any questions regarding the exam, don't hesitate to write me a comment and I will try to, to, to answer it as best as I can. This is it for today. Thank you very much for uh, listening and I hope that you will enjoy this video.